Hi again, so let's talk some more about education from the macro scale perspective, right? We're talking about education as a social institution. We are not talking about your school district, your particular school, that's too micro level. Yes, even a school district with lots of hundreds of maybe even thousands of students in it, that's too micro scale. We're not talking about that. We're talking about society level education system, okay? Macro scale part of the social structure that takes care of some of the needs that that society has. In this case, the education system fulfills the need for um, a certain level of knowledge that the citizens and residents in the United States are expected to have by the time they hit 18. Okay, so that's what we're talking about the education system, your school district, your string of uh, daycares, your home school association, whichever method you might use on the micro scale to fulfill that macro scale norm. That's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about macro scale stuff with um, the education system. Okay, macro scale. So uh, what we're going to do in this short lesson is look at functionalism, which is one of our macro scale points of view, one of the perspectives through which the we can put that lens on and we can say, okay, we're going to look at this macro scale part of society and we're going to figure out what kind of positive effect what kind of stability or how does it create order for society as a whole? That's always the question that you're asking if you use functionalism as your perspective. So we're going to do that with the education system. We're going to look at it on the macro scale because that's what functionalism does as the um, social institution level of the education system. and. We're going to ask the question, how does it work towards stability and order in society? And when we look at that question, a functionalist would immediately conclude, well, the norms in the USA for education level are this, and therefore we need a mechanism to fulfill those norms, to fulfill that norm, because not all of our households have the same education level. So if the norm in the USA is this, and we need a standardized pathway for all of us to achieve that, or as many people as we can convince to achieve that as possible, then that's called the education system. So a functionalist says it works towards stability and order because it is the means, it is the standard way that we in our society have in place for that knowledge to be imparted by the, the knowledge experts to the people who need the knowledge. K through 12 is the minimum level that's required right now um, in the USA. And not all of us finish that, as we mentioned uh, already once before. Okay, so it's a macro scale norm that we have a certain level of knowledge and skills. That's what the education system does. So we're going to look at specifically some of the other things besides ABCs and 123s that the education system does because they got a hold of us for so long. I mean, pre K through 12, that's a lot of our early developmental years. So we're going to be going back a lot and talking about the socialization chapter right now. If you don't know what the word socialization means to a sociologist, not to a dog trainer, not to people with casual conversations, but socialization to a sociologist. Stop the video right now, go back to chapter three, find it in your notes and refresh your memory because you've got to be able to remember the stuff that we talked about in the socialization lectures and chapter, the way a sociologist uses that word so that you're on the same page with me right now. Okay. So there are some, a functionalist would say not only this that I have written here, but a functionalist would also say that there are some intentional things that by design, the education system is supposed to do in the USA. And those are called manifest functions. That's a term that a famous sociologist gave us. The intentional things that um, a macro scale part of the social structure does are called manifest functions. The unintentional things, kind of the side effects that happen as a result of the way something is organized are called latent functions. Manifest and latent functions, intentional, unintentional outcomes of um, any social institution. In this case, we're looking at education system. So an intentional outcome or a manifest function of the education system, functionalists say it's supposed to contribute to an individual socialization process. 
So if you think back to the socialization chapter, when we talked about something called the agents of socialization, we used school, a much more micro level word than education system. We used the word school to talk about one of the agents of socialization. We go to school, we are subject to the rules, to the authority, to the lessons, to other people's um, communication styles, other people's, uh, you know, the principle, the, the hierarchy, the, the chain of command, that's what I'm looking for. We are subject to that in the school system that is not necessarily standardized in every single one of our households. I've seen people out in public with their little kids and some people are really strict and their kids, you know, really just like march and they're silent the whole time in the store and other people's kids are like turning over the turnstiles and throwing everything on the ground, you know, uh, really acting up and they don't get any kind of disciplinary action. And so in school, it's supposed to kind of level out all that kind of stuff so that kids kind of get some development about how do they have self-control or to whom do they need to answer if they are naughty or there are consequences for being naughty, those kinds of things. And so socialization is part of the intentional role that the education system in general serves in society to keep it stable and orderly over time. So all of us to a certain extent have a degree of self um, awareness, self restraint, respect for authority. Ideally, that's the purpose of um, part of the socialization uh, that we get in the education system. Another intentional thing that's part of um, the education system is that cultural competency that we talked about in a previous lecture. We are typically, uh, we typically grow up in homes that are pretty standardized. They're pretty even keel with our norms, our little micro scale family norms, and they don't really, we don't really have intentional inclusion of diverse ways of being, diverse ways of thinking or beliefs. And the school system puts us in contact with people of diverse beliefs, diverse backgrounds, so it builds our tolerance. And even if our classrooms do not have so much diversity in them, the curriculum includes information about all this kind of diversity so that we're not so sheltered. And we aren't just like, you know, released into the wild when we're 18 and we don't know anything about the diversity that we're going to encounter. Think about how shocking that would be. Well, the school system can make sure that we um, have some of that in our background to know uh, that diversity is out there and we have, you know, have to develop our tolerance and, and embrace it actually so that we can um, have a, a fuller or more full, I don't know what word is correct there, experience um, in life. Social control, oops, I have two, two L's there, let me erase one. Social control is a major part of the education system. Also, that's back to chapter six, the deviant behavior chapter. Social controls are methods that society has in place to steer people away from going against norms which is called deviance, and steer them toward following the acceptable side of norms any, instead. This is one of the manifest functions of education according to functionalism. You go there and you have incentives. You are a, you get rewarded with a cupcake party or whatever um, before COVID if uh, you did well or something. You get, you know, a point system or something where you move your little flag up or down, you know, based on your behavior. So you get all kinds of positive and negative reinforcement about behavior when you do or don't follow rules. And we don't necessarily get that in our household, so it goes back to socialization also. Social placement. Now here is one that functionalists say is great, it's awesome, it's intentional, but when we get to conflict theory, they're really going to tear this one apart. So social placement is intentional in the functionalist mindset because not every job in the United States has the same social value and not every job has the same educational requirement necessary to, um, you know, to make it happen. So in uh, the mind of a functionalist, since the education system produces people of different educational levels, now, yes, I said K through 12. And so you might think, well, 12th grade is the same level. Well, no, it's not. Not if you got all AP and early college stuff and I was in resource or remediation or whatever the word is in your particular micro scale um, school or, um, or uh, school district. Right. So I might have a diploma and you might have a diploma, but if your diploma was AP stuff and you've got scholarships to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and I did not have that and I'm going to work at Taco Bell for the next 10, 12 years to decide whether I wanted to, you know, maybe Taco Bell's fine and I'll still be there when I'm 60. 
I, we need you to work at Taco Bell, right? So Functionalist says because we need people to work at Taco Bell and we also need people to work at NASA, that social placement is a, an intentional part of the design of the educational system. And when you look at different outcomes for different people who pass through the educational system, functionalists say by design it's supposed to be that way because society has different positions within it. Now we're in chapter seven with the ladder that we drew, drew with all the different um, you know, levels on the ladder. Think back to Lolly's Kin. They were talking about the education system a lot in that video that we watched a teeny part of um, for educational purposes only, HBO, um, you know, in this class, right? So. So anyway, social placement is an intentional thing and that's what it means. It means that we place you into the socioeconomic level, income, occupation, education. That education level is linked to what occupation you can qualify for. And it's also linked to, um, to the income level that you're gonna get. It is. Okay, let me see how much time I have left. Gotta put my eyes on for this. Okay, I think I have time to do this one too without like having it cut me off. Okay, so, um, Functionalists also say that even though the manifest functions are intentional by design of the system, so the educational system is intentionally designed to impart knowledge and skills uh, to the people who qualify for it, uh, and in our case, it's everybody who's um, under the age of 18. You're supposed to go through a school system or, or homeschool or something. Um, but not only is it supposed to do that, but it intentionally contributes to socialization, the tolerance, social control, keep you on the straight and narrow, hopefully, and also um, social placement, the, the job, the future that you're going to have in the socioeconomic system. But also there are some unintentional things, things like matchmaking. Many, many, many of us meet our future spouse. We definitely meet our peer groups and our friends um, in a school setting. And so if we are... Um, together with those people for a long time, we will develop long-term friendships typically, and we also might develop romantic relationships with them. Um, and so matchmaking, you know, into the future to make those families that we talked about, that's another thing that um, school does, but it's not intentionally part of the design, and that's why we have it over here under latent functions. It also restricts activities and steers you more toward activities that are socially approved of. So if you are held captive, so to speak, in uh, the school system for that many years of your life, there are some socially approved of activities like book clubs, debate clubs, sports uh, teams, cheerleading, choir, uh, all of these different kinds of things that are socially approved of activities. And um, homework, don't forget homework, that restricts activities even when you're outside of the school building or outside of the Zoom classroom or whatever it is that you've been experiencing during these days of COVID. And so school restricts activities. It keeps you out of the workforce because some of us at 13, 14 are very capable and competent of holding down a 40 hour a week job. We might prefer that to some of the classroom stuff that we have to go through, but the law ma maintains that you have to stay in until a certain, um, until a certain age and you can't even work a certain number of hours until after um, that age. And so it restricts your activities. You're not a delinquent on the street, spray painting bridges and, you know, vandalizing the 7-Eleven and stuff like that. It restricts your activities. And it also creates a generation gap. It gives you and your peer group, your generation, whether it's millennials, generation Z, generation Y, generation X, whatever the heck I'm from. I think I'm the one before that. I don't even remember. Um, it creates a generation gap so that you have a different perspective on life than your mama and then your grandmama does, right? I mean, think about that. Do you have a different outlook, a different perspective, maybe a different um, belief system, maybe a different political um, philosophy, certainly a different idea idea of the skills and knowledge and the degree of technology that's going to be um, involved in your life and controlling uh, your life, so to speak. There were some air quotes. And so it creates a generation gap. It's not intentionally to do that, but school is the place where so many of us get exposure to new and innovative ideas and inventions. So um, if mom has been out of school for a while, she ain't going to hear about that. And so you're going to have um, your own unique identity that your peers, your age peers are going to share with you across the country whether you know them or not because if you're in the 10th grade in Montana and the 10th grade in Mississippi sure there are gonna be some differences based on maybe available dollars but you're gonna have pretty much the same um, experiences as each other from
from that one state to the next. And so these are the functionalist points that we can look at when we put that lens on about the education system. But there is another macro scale point of view that we are going to look at also. And we're going to tear into some of these things because the, the